Good evening, Satanan. Welcome to sa New Covenant in Christ Saturday evening service. The Lord has an important message for us all tonight. So, before we get to word, let us all declare our church declaration sabay sabay. Today, I receive all that Christ died to give me His abundant life, limitless grace, boundless mercies, divine restoration of youth, and overflowing provisions. Today, I take hold of all God's blessings, healings, and miracles. I shall be transformed from glory to ever-increasing glory, and victory to overwhelming victory. I will enter the promised land of the believer's rest, seeing his mighty restoration in each and every area of my life. I proclaim that I am God's beloved, his highly favored child, his powerful servant, and his overcoming champion. And because I am blessed overflowing, I will be a blessing to all. In Jesus' name, and the people of God say, Amen. Church, if you declared it with faith in your heart, it will definitely become a reality sa atong kinabuhi. Now, let's go to our opening reading. Magbasa ko from John chapter 14, verse 1 sa Amplified Translation. Akong basahon lang ang mga highlighted portions. Kay. Ang Amplified Translation ng good has a tendency nga wordy ka siya. So, sa John 14, verse 1, nakabatang dere. Ingon si Jesus. Do not let your heart be troubled, afraid. Believe confidently in God and trust in Him. Believe also in me. Okay? Amazing kayo na. Sa lain ng mga translation, trust in God and trust also in me. So we believe in God, we trust Him, and we trust in Jesus as well. Iyang mga disciples, mga God, nabalaka na mga God at this time. So, ampo sa ta. Before ta mag-add to sa ato ang main word. Lord, Heavenly Father, salamat kay Lord, sa mga people, yung mga nagatan, ako karong gabi una, Lord. Lord, we believe, O oh God, importante kay ng mensahe, Lord, nga yung ipabot sa ilaha. Lord, use the mouth, Lord God, of your servant to speak your word to your people, O God. Salamat, Lord, that these words, Lord God, will produce the kind of faith and trust and hope, Lord God, that you want in your people, O God. And salamat po, Lord, for our audience tonight. Bless them in every way possible. Keep their minds and hearts attentive, Lord, and open to your word. In Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray. The people of God say, Amen. Ang title nato para sa mensahe sa ginoo sa ato, para karong gabi una, is attacks will come but the lord will defend his people ina na magana di ba nakabutang ni sa Isaiah chapter 54 verse 17 that no weapon formed against us shall ever prosper now wala nagsulti si lord nga dili mabuhat ang weapon naghiya po weapon nga mabuhat against us pero in the end dili lang gyud siya magprosper mo nang promise sa Ginoo para sa ato ang tanan now mo na bitaw diri ingon si Jesus nga sa ato ang Diba yung siya, ay ka, ay ka balaka. Do not be worried, do not be afraid, trust in God, trust also in me. Sa lain po ng portion, naging po si Jesus sa mga disciples, In this world, you, referring to believers, will have tribulation, will have trouble. But fear not, I have overcome the world. So si Lord mismo, he said that Christians will always have trouble. In fact, kung sundo na to ang King James Version na, ng tribulation, ganang gigamit ng word, sa mga nakamao, Ang tribulation nga word is bugat kay na siya nga word. Dili na siya ordinary lang nga problema, pero hastang bugat na ginang nga problema. Kanang grabe yung kaayo, kanang grabe nga kaliso, grabe ang problema. Pero yung ni Jesus, nga dili ta mahadlok, dili ta ang ay mabalaka, because tabangan ta niya kanunay. Mo na ang mensahe ni Lord, para sa mga anak karon nga naminaw sa toa, sa toa diri karon sa tong New Covenant in Christ Saturday evening service, and para sa toa ang tanan sa New Covenant in Christ Church. So, basahon na to ang pinakauna example ng gihatag ni Lord sa ato akarong gabi na, si Joseph. Kaya daghantag matunan po sa iyang kinabuhi. So, Genesis 39, verse 21 to 23. Ang story diri is that si Joseph uh, napasangin lang na sa wife ni Potiphar. Kabalo naman mo sa story. So, nabutang siya sa prisuhan nga wala siya sala. Pero mo nang So, verse 21. But the Lord was with Joseph in the prison and showed him his faithful love. And the Lord made Joseph a favorite with the prison warden. Before long, the warden put Joseph in charge of all the other prisoners and over everything that happened in the prison. Verse 23, the warden had no more worries because Joseph took care of everything. The Lord was with him and caused everything he did to succeed. Krabi kayo, no? Si Joseph, according sa pulong sa ginoo, is gigugmagyo kaay sa ginoo. He was faithfully loved by the Lord. And the Lord actually showed him his faithful love. That is a verse 21. Pero, despite that, 
na priso gihapon si Joseph. Despite that, nagka-problema gihapon siya, kagi sa pasangin lang siya sa wife ni Potiphar, nga dili niya ginapagbigyan, nga nakagusto sa iyo ha, dili gyan siya mag-sleep with her. Because si Joseph was a very faithful man. He was faithful to his employer, si Potiphar, he was faithful to his master, and most of all, he was very faithful sa ginoon. And then, ang amazing ni Ana is that even though gibutang na siya sa prisuhan, di ka makakita record sa entire book sa Bible na si Joseph nagbagulbul, na si Joseph naguul, na si Joseph gipasangin lang ang ginoo, nga nang luod siya sa ginoo, nga nabalaka siya, wala yun. Nga naman, grabe ang iyang faith sa ginoo. And kabalo siya, gihold on po niya promise na gipakita sa ginoo sa iya sa iyang dream. Because si Joseph had already the wisdom to interpret dreams. Katong bata pa siya, basig wala pa kayo na-develop, wala pa siya kayo kasabot. Pero when he was growing, sige, siguro siya meditate atong dream yung gihatang yung Lord sa iya. And therefore, mo ito yung ginagunitan nga promise yung kinabuhi. Nakahatag sa kusog sa iya ha, o gayahang ka ng nakapaligon sa iya sa iyang faith. And that is why Joseph was able to do every task given to him faithfully. One of the reasons why Satan attacked Joseph was not only because the Lord loved Joseph, but because Joseph was a faithful person. Lisod ka ay pilihon sa kaaway, ang usa ka tao nga faithful si eta na niyang pagabuhaton. Faithful siya sa iyang trabaho. Kay makita ni mo katong sa panahon nga naa siya sa panimalay ni Potiphar, he did the best that he could and everything that he did prospered. Even sa jail, he still did everything that he could. To the point, no wala na nag ang warden. Kay maayo kay mamahala si Joseph dito sa sulod sa prisuhan. Now, most Christians, if they would be thrown in prison, manood na sa ginoo, madepress na, madown na, pero Joseph never let that get to him. What he did, he did the best with whatever circumstances na ma-find niya iyang sarili. So, kung asa man tayo sa ginoo, no matter what happens sa ato, adari sa kinabuhi, we always do our best and we never give up. And we hold on to the promises of the Lord just like Joseph. As long as Joseph did everything that way, according man na, will man po na si Ginoo para kay Joseph po. So therefore, the Lord elevated Joseph and made him head over everything. Kabalo naman mo sa story. Nay, o sa ka wine or cup bearer, ang king, na naadid sa prisuhan, gi-interpret niya ang dream, tapos naluwas tong katong ano, nakagawa siya sa prison. And then, nag-serve siya balik sa king, pero nakalimta niya si Joseph for two years. Pero still, at the time nga si Pharaoh, nagkaroon ng dream na bothered ka ay siya. Digyo siya kasabot sa iyong dream, dito pa siya na hinumduan sa cupbearer sa king. And then, because Joseph interpreted that dream correctly, morning nahitabo sa Genesis 41. So, verse 39, nakapatang na rin, Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Since God has revealed to you the meaning of the dreams to you, clearly no one else is as intelligent or as wise as you are. So verse 41, Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge of the entire land of Egypt. And so verse 44, And Pharaoh said to him, I am Pharaoh, but no one will lift a hand or foot in the entire of Egypt without your approval. Grabe kayo, no? Kuyaw kaayo ang authority or autoridad ng gihatag ni Pharaoh ka Joseph na bisan lang lang maka-raise o kamot or maka-raise o tiil daw, dili daw nila pwede buhaton kung wala gitugot ni Joseph. Grabe, no? Na kung nakabalo lang ang tama kristuhanan, ngayon anak po ang atong authority over sa kaaway sa ato ang kinabuhi. You know? Um, si Satan, mga God, is always trying to attack God's people. Now, funny kayo ba kay um, tong last Sunday, naghatag si Lord sa ato ang mensahe. Ang mensahe nga gihatag niya sa ato is that we are in spiritual warfare and the enemy is trying to attack us all the time. And therefore, we need to defend ourselves and we need to get the wisdom from the Lord aron how we can become victorious in every circumstance. Unya, na yung mga miyembro nga nagduol sa kuwa afterwards, yung sila nga, Pastor ni, katong mensahe nga katong para gito sa kuwa. Pero anak ko nga, I praise the Lord, glory to God. Anak ko nga, pero Lord, nag-wonder ko ba, anak ko, pag nagsulti ko sa itong miyembro nga, pagbuhat na ko ng mensahe nga na, sige ko, wonder Lord, Lord, kinsa mag ang nag problema sa itong church, kanina naman ang mensahe. Kinsa man gid ang ginaatak sa kaaway sa atong church. Little did I know nga ang church pud na to ginaatak pud sa kaaway. And there was this really bad news nga naabot sa ato atong last Wednesday sa receiving meeting. Pero ang ang funny ana is that 
Tinood yun, no? Uh, the enemy is really threatened sa ito. Kung kinsa gani threaten si Satan, like st- Satan was threatened with Joseph, po po niyang itak, grabe ka ayo. Pero nothing can stop God's people as long as they remain faithful in the task or they follow the leading of the Lord sa ilang kinabuhi. Kung unsay gusto sa ginoo sa atong kinabuhi. So, you know naman what happened to Joseph. He faithfully served in prison and then he faithfully served also in the house of Potiphar. And suddenly, in the end, he became head over all of Egypt. Is that an accident? No, that's not an accident. Nga man, because nakabutang ang sa Bible, si Jesus mismo nag-ingon. Ingon siya nga, if you are faithful with little, you will be faithful with much. So, sometimes, ginatan po sa gino, ginaon sa nato pag-treat ang ginahatag niya sa tua. Ginaon sa nato ang ihang health nga ginahatag sa tua. Ginaon sa nato pag-treat ang pamilya nga ginahatag niya sa tua. Ginaon sa niya pag-treat ang ministry nga ginahatag niya sa tua. Ginaon sa nato pag-treat ang simbahan nga ginahatag niya sa tua. Lord, the Lord looks at these things and the small things that He has given us. When we are faithful, the Lord promotes us to even bigger things. Really accidente that Joseph was made in charge of all of Egypt. Because when he was in prison, when he was at the lowest point of his life, even when he was a slave sa Balaini Potiphar, he always faithfully followed the Lord and did the best that he could. And he was always a faithful steward. Sa tanan nga, Gibutang under his responsibility. And sometimes the Lord is looking for that. And those are the kinds of people that the Lord loves to promote and to favor and to give good success sa kinabuhi. Everything that you do for the Lord and that you do for God's people, di yun makalimutan sa gino. According pa si Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10 sa Amplified Classic, nakabatang dari, God is not unrighteous to forget or overlook your labor and the love which you have shown for His namesake in ministering to the needs of his saints, his own consecrated people, as you still do. Ang nindot sa gino is that nagpromise siya nga never again niya mahinundoman ang atong mga sala o atong mga wrongdoings. Mo nang promise sa gino sa ato under sa new covenant. Pero ang nindot po sa gino is that while dili niya ginahinundoman, dili kito niya mahinundoman, promise ko niya, I solemnly swear, I will never, never ever repeat your sins, and your sins and lawless deeds I will remember no more. Pero ang nindot po sa is that He always remembers everything that you do for Him. He always remembers everything that you do for His people. He always remembers everything that you do for His church. So, grabe ko kayo si Lord ba? Kay? Everything that you do, walay sayang. According pa sa 1 Corinthians chapter 15, nakabotang dito sa last verse that everything that you do is not useless. Everything has a reward. Wala kay gibuhat para sa ginoo nga kawang. So anyways, you can read that for yourself in the last verse of 1 Corinthians 15. So, tanaw na po nato another person po sa Bible nga attack po sa kaaway. Not only because he was loved by the Lord, but because threatened po si Satan sa iya. No, tanaw na to ano threaten si Satan sa iya. So Daniel chapter 1 sa Amplified Classic, si Daniel dere o iyang kauban si Shadrach, si Meshach, o Abednego. Ang naitabo magodani is that Gisakop na sa Babylon Empire ang mga Hodeo. So Israel and Judah, they were destroyed, they were defeated, ang armies nila were routed, and then ang gusto sa hari karon is kwaon ang mga pinaka-best ng mga sons of nobility o sons sa mga hari dito sa Hodeo kay buhato niya mga trabahante niya diha sa palasyo. So there is Daniel chapter 1, so verse 3, nakabutang dali. And the Babylonian king told Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, sa NIV pa, that is his chief of staff, to bring in some of the children of Israel, both of the royal family and of the nobility. Verse 4, youths without blemish, well-favored in appearance, and skillful in all wisdom, discernment, and understanding, apt in learning knowledge, competent to stand and serve in the king's palace and to teach them the literature and language of the Chaldeans. So, ang purpose niya ay, nagidala sila Daniel, sila Shadrach, sila Meshach, o Gabed, nego dito sa, sa Babylon, dito sa palasyo, is not to lift them up, but to make them workers, to make them servants of the king. Because a king will always be served by good servants. So, nangita sila people who are wise. When you are wise, according pa sa book of Daniel also, your light will shine before men. Mugina. It is um, something that gives you or even takes the attentions of kings and important people. So, kini sila ang mga pinaka-best of the best 
nga mga anak sa nobility ug mga king. So, si Daniel di ay, huwag yung makauban, di di mga ordinaryong tao, pero mga anak di sila sa mga hari, mga anak sila sa mga tao nga tag-as o granggo. Tapos, gidala sila din sa Babylon to serve the king. Verse 9, nakabotang diri, Now, God made Daniel to find favor, compassion, and loving kindness with the chief of the eunuchs, katong chief of staff. When you have verse 17, nakabotang ko diri, As for these four youths, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding of all kinds of visions and dreams. So this is one thing that Daniel has the same with Joseph nga in common. He had wisdom and understanding to discern and interpret dreams. Pero aside from that, ang point na ko dali nga, importante yung kayo, di na kalimta ng verse 9, that God caused Daniel to find favor, compassion, and loving kindness. Dito sa in charge, ilha, katong chief of staff sa king, katong chief of eunuchs. But at the same time, Daniel was not only given favor, compassion, and loving kindness with him, but even the king himself. And not only that, Daniel was so healthy and so long-lived that for 70 years nga naa sila dito sa, sa laing nga nasod, ka kung asa ang kingdom karon sa Babylonians, he served under four different kings. And all these four different kings made Daniel their favorite. Why? Because Daniel was caused by God to always find favor, compassion, and loving kindness sa mga taong nga ahead sa iya ha, or katong mga hari or people in charge of him. Muna, if you have the Lord in your life, you can expect the Lord to give you favor, compassion, and loving kindness gikan sa, mat sa mata sa imong mga boss, sa imong mga kliyente, sa ubang tao, sa people that you meet, the people that you minister to, yun ana si Lord. The Lord grants us favor with both Him and with man. And muna nakamutang po, so word of God. But, na is something po kay Daniel, nga nakathreaten kayo kay Satanas. On sa to, sa Daniel chapter 6, nakamutang din, Now, Daniel so distinguished himself among the administrators and the satraps by his exceptional qualities that the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. Verse 10, When Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened towards Jerusalem. Three times a day, he got down on his knees and prayed, take note of this, giving thanks to his God, just as he had done before. So, makita niyo dere nga, ang story dere, lahi na po ni nga hari ang nag-rule dere. Kay ang kingdom sa Babylon, napildi na mampod. Unya ang nagahari na karon kay si Darius na pod, ang hari sa Medes and Persians. Persian na ni nga kingdom. Pero kuyaw yu kay si Daniel, nga bisan kinsang hari ang mag-rule din ha sa lugarang ka na, siya gigbuhatong number one advisor po. And sa verse 3, klaro kay dia that Daniel was faithful in everything that he did. Kaya nga no, maayo daw kay mo trabaho si Daniel that gusto gids ni Haring Darius diri to put him in charge over the whole kingdom. Murag help si Pharaoh o si Joseph. Now, although sila ang hari, unya o si Daniel ang in charge of whole nation, mo na po siya prime minister. Now, tungkod ana, nagselos ang iyang mga kauban, niya, mga advisors, mga opisyales. So, nagbuat sila plano, you know the story, ilang gi ulog-ulogan ang hari, unya gina nila, uy, hari, mahain kay ka nga hari ba? Dapat magbuhat ka ka ng balaod nga bawal magampo or bawal mga yu o petition sa bisantinsa kung dili lang sa imo ha. So ang hari po, nadala po siya sa iyang mga advisor, ni pirma po siya dito sa, sa balaod ng katon. Nakalimot siya nga si Daniel Lip, pray to his Lord every day. Kaya Daniel had this habit, but three times a day, moampo yun siya dito facing Jerusalem, dito sa iyang bintana. And not only did he pray to God all the time, he gave thanks to the Father all the time. Amazing kayo ba? And money ang mga habits nga threatening kay kay Satanas. Kay a prayerful Christian is always a victorious Christian. God is able to send His blessings or He's able to give victory sa tanang eri sa kiniboy, sa mga mainam po ng Christians. And not only prayerful Christians, but those who are constantly thankful. Now, Daniel was in forced labor. Kung naa siya choice, muli siya dito sa ilahang lugar sa, sa Jerusalem. But, dili. Because their kingdom, their, their hometown was conquered by this Persian army as well. Dili lang ang Babylonians. So he was forced to serve at the palace. Pero despite the fact na dili ito ideal na situation, Daniel did the best that he could. 
and he was still thankful to God and prayerful to God. And the enemy cannot take a Christian that is prayerful and thankful to God. It is no mistake nga katong attack against the church, ang news ato arrived during prayer meeting because gusto niya bulabugon ang prayers or ang prayer meeting. That's why the enemy tries to keep the prayer meeting up. To tries to keep people from attending paper prayer meeting, tries to keep people from watching prayer meeting, tries to keep people from participating or sending in their prayer requests. It's because Satan is threatened by prayer. Prayer is how a Christian gets God's power to work for and in our behalf. Dere sa kinabuhi. Paul was a prayerful Christian. Siya nang ng tudlo sa to sa New Covenant. He was very prayerful. Jesus also modeled for us a prayerful life because that's how every Christian should be. He was spirit-filled, he was power-filled, but he was also prayerful. And one ng sekreto sa pagka-powerful ng Jesus o pagka-effective niya sa iyang ministry. Padayin ta sa itong reading. So verse 11, this is the time na napapirma na sa mga advisors ni King Darius ang katong law. Then nga to sila kay Daniel. So verse 11, nakabutang dari, Then these men went as a group and found Daniel praying and asking God for help. Take note, he was praying and asking God for help. So verse 20, nalabay na si Daniel in the lion, lion's den. When he came near the den, he called to Daniel in an anguished voice, Daniel, servant of the living God, si Haring Darius, has your God whom you serve continually been able to rescue you from the lions? And so verse 28, so Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius and the reign of Cyrus the Persian. Ang story, everybody knows, is that Daniel was thrown into the lion's den, right? Pero it was that even though Daniel was thrown into the lion's den, God shut the mouths of lions. Nagpadala siya ang anghel, nga dili man lang sila mag silang mouth, dili po nila hilabtan, dili po nila i-attack si Daniel. We know this. This is not a accident. It did not happen out of the blue. It's, it's not something na milagro lang, nga wala hinungdan. What is the hinungdan? Klaro ka ayos sa verse 11. Daniel was praying and asking God for help. Why is he asking God for help? Because he knows that there are enemies coming against him. He knows that his prayer time with the Lord is being attacked by them. He knows nga what he's doing is not exactly legal at that time. But he knows that he will never stop praying to the Lord. So he's asking for help. And Christians who ask for help will always be helped by the Lord. Mona siyang reason nga nuna shut ang mouth sa lion. And the king also knows the secret of Daniel. So nagul ang hari, gusto niya bawi yun ang law. But wala na siya mabuhat because dili man mabawi ang mga words sa mga hari. Anak magyo tungo ng panahon. And even Anna, ato ang Lord pod Kay hari man po siya. Kung unsa gisulti niya sa Bible, lalo na sa New Covenant, di na gina niya bawi on. Mo na gina siya forever. Tapos ningon siya, has the living God, your God, whom you could serve continually. You see how faithful Daniel was. Even the king knew that while he was serving the king, he was first and foremost a servant of God, whom he never stopped serving, and he served continually. Unya unsa niya itabo, Daniel was rescued, wala siya gikaon. And then nakagawa siya the next day. And then ang niyang makaaway o gilang mga pamilya mo ay gilabay dito sa lions. According to the word of God, before pa sila naabot sa, sa floor dito sa lions den, wala na. Gipang kaon na sila o gipang break na sa mga lions ang ilahang mga bones. So Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius and the reign of Cyrus the Persian. This is very important. Balikan nato niyo niya. Nga na importante nga ma-remember nato. Nga nag-prosper si Daniel, hantod kay Cyrus because ana mong na si si Daniel had a very important role sa pag-uli sa mga Hodeo dito sa ilang homeland o pag-rebuild sa ilang temple which we will take up a little bit later. So Satan is attacking Daniel not just because he belongs to God, not because he was a believer lang, but because Daniel was very prayerful and he was continually a thankful person unto the Lord. Now, Satan is very threatened by Christians who are prayerful and who are very thankful unto God. Now, let's take another example sa Bible. Si Haring David. Sa 1 Samuel 29, wala pa siya na hari, right? Unya, ang nahitabuan eh is, napili na niya si Goliath. Unya, nagselos man si Saul sa iya, ha? So, David had to run for his life. Accompanied with his faithful, uh, mighty men, si David and his army, uh, small personal army lang, had to leave Israel. They had to leave their families. 
because Saul wanted to kill David. Kapila sila nagikias kay kay King Saul. Saul tried to kill David many many times. Naabot nagi si David sa rock bottom nga low point in his life yung kaayo nga pati ang mga Philistines nga yung gipildi katong napildi ni si Goliath dito na siya nag appeal sa ilang army. Dito na siya nitabang unta sa Philistines para unta makigaway sa mga Hudeyo. Now, a, a lot of Christians don't know this, pero basahon nato sa 1 Samuel 29, the Philistines reject David. The entire Philistine army now mobilized at Afek, and the Israelites camped at the spring in Jezreel. Ang kalaban si, sa, sa Philistines ang Israelites. Verse 2, as the Philistine rulers were leading out their troops in groups of hundreds and thousands, David and his men marched at the rear with King Achish. Verse 3, but the Philistine commanders demanded, what are these Hebrews doing here? And Achish told them, This is David, the servant of King Saul of Israel. He has been with me for years. And I've never found a single fault in him from the day he arrived until today. Verse 4. But the Philistine commanders were angry. Send him back to the town you've given him, they demanded. He can't go into the battle with us. What if he turns against us in the battle and becomes our adversary? Is there any better way for him to reconcile himself with his master? Then by handing our heads over to him. Ingon pa ang mga Philistine commanders, ko if you continue reading that verse or that chapter, na kapatang dito, anong mga Philistine commanders, di ba mo man na siyang ginakanta sa mga Hodeo nga Saul killed his thousands o niya David kills his tens of thousands? Ganong mo appeal man at sila sa atong gira karon. Basig dito na noon, while nag-fight na noon, ta basig itry door ta nila, niya ilahat ang, ano, il, ilahat ang una yun dito sa atong likod. Ano ang mga, ano, ano ang mga Philistines? So, dap, funny ka eh, grabe ka eh nga, low na gil si David kay kung ginaatak ka sa hari sa Hudeyo asa pa man di ka maadto para mangitag trabaho para manginabuhi of course maadto ka din sa kaaway sa imong hari which is naabot na siya sa Philistine army and he was been serving the Philistine king si Achish for several uh, for a long time na so katawanan ka ayo he was about to fight the Israelites who were his people pero wala pa ni sugot ang Ginoo ya pong gigamit siguro ang mga commanders para Dili pa makasala si David o ginana. So, gipauli sila David dito sa Ziklag. Kung asa ang tao na gihatag sa ilahan ni King Achish para sa iyang mga, para sa iyang mga people. O, na dito yung mga, yung mga family, na dito mga family nila sa mga mighty men of valor ni David, na dito sa Ziklag. Unya, ang nahitabo, pag uli nila na giraid di ay ang ilang town or ilang kampo dito sa mga Amalekite. Sa so, verse Samuel chapter 30, Amplified classic kung basa. So verse 3, you know, the day, So David and his men came to the town, and behold, it was burned, and their wives and sons and daughters were taken captive. David was greatly distressed, for the men spoke of stoning him, because the souls of them all were bitterly grieved, each man for his sons and daughters. But David encouraged and strengthened himself in the Lord his God. So grabe kayo, okay? Imbis laging nga... Uh, Kauban unta sila, mga hudeyo unta sila, dito na unta sila makikaway sa mga hudeyo uban ang mga Philistines na kaaway nila. Inana nagkalaw ang kinabuhi ni David at this time. Pero while po nag sila dito sa battleground, ilaha po mga pamilya, ilang mga sawa, ilang mga anak, giraid po sa mga Amalekites. Unya, gidalatan na nilang mga uh, gamit, gidalatan na nilang mga animals, gidalatan na nilang mga asawa, mga anak. Unya, suko kaayo ang mga people ni David ngay nga gusto nila batuhon na si David. Pero on sa gibuat ni David, rather than ma-depress siya, rather than nga ma-down siya, rather than mag-give up siya, he strengthened and encouraged himself in the Lord. Now, how do you think David encouraged and strengthened himself in the Lord? Remember, David is a praiser. He is a singer. In fact, before niya napildi si Goliath sa Bible, you can learn or read a story in the Bible where he used to sing songs and play the harp for King Saul and that would drive away the evil spirit that is bothering King Saul. Katong before pa patay, si Goliath. Unya, si David wrote most of the Psalms na mabasa nato sa book of Psalms. So David is a praiser and a worshiper and that is how he encouraged and strengthened himself in the Lord. Powerful kaayo ang praise and worship. That is one of the reasons why Satan put his focus and his attacks on David and tried to discourage him because when that when Satan discourages you, mga God, ano ka ka ng mapili ka? Kung magpadala ka sa depression, magpadala ka sa kahadlok, magpadala ka sa kaguol, mapili ka ni Satanas, Ana. Mabita na kabotang sa 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Na kabotang din nga, Satan prowls about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. 
Ang funny thing lang ni Ana is that he is a roaring lion. Why? Ngano nag-roar man si Satan? To put fear into the hearts and minds of God's people. Now, kung naka dito sa jungle, niya, makadungog ka roar sa lion, di ba mahadlo ka? Mo ng purpose ni Satan, ngano nag-roar siya. But, pangag na si Satan nga lion. Wala na siya kusog, wala na siya sandata laban sa ato ah. Because, no weapon formed against us will prosper. And nakabutang po sa word of God, ingon po dito nga, Satan has been disarmed. Satan and his demons have been disarmed by what Jesus did on the cross by nailing the law and the requirements that were against us onto the cross. So wala na magamit si Satan sa ito ang weapon because he used to use the power of condemnation. So karon na Jesus has given us grace, wala na naging makapili sa ito. Funny ka ayaw because he is trying to roar, trying to scare people, pero kung mapaakan ka ni Satan, wala naman siya yung ngipon, kaya pangag naman siya, sumura lang kang gina pakpak o sa kategulang nga wala'y pustiso. Maraming na na ba? So, just think about that. Knowing uh, Satan tries to scare you, but he is a powerless enemy. Muna bitaw, 1 Peter 5.8 comes after 1 Peter 5.7, which is, cast your cares and anxiety in the Lord because he cares for you. Because a Christian who knows how to cast his society on the Lord is unbeatable or dili mahilabtan or dili madivar ni Satan. Get that? Kung kabalo ka magkas sa imong care sa gino, dili po ka mapaakan or dili po ka ma-attack or dili po ka ma-devour ni Satan. Mo ng 1 Peter 5.7 o 1 Peter 5.8, go hand in hand and go together because mo na siyang konteksto niya ng verse na kana, Right? Mo na timing yung kaay itong word po ni Pastor Dexter last Wednesday na preach on Matthew 11.28. Ngunit si Jesus, come to me, all of you who are tired and heavily laden, and I will give you rest. How do you come to the Lord? You come to Him in prayer. You give Him your burdens, and He will carry your burdens for you. That is the secret of all Christians who are prayerful. And then si David put, he's a praiser. Powerful kay ang praise and worship good. Satan hates praise and worship. In fact, when you praise God, God defeats Satan for you. Diri bitaw sa 2 Chronicles 20, verse 17 o 22 sa The Living Bible, there were many armies, there were three armies coming against uh, the king of Judah, sila King Jehoshaphat. Kanya, wala sila mabuhat because they could not defeat this army. On sa may gisotin ni Lord Sela. Sa verse 17, on si Lord Sela, But you will not need to fight. Take your places, stand quietly, and see the incredible rescue operation God will perform for you. O people of Judah and Jerusalem, don't be afraid or discouraged. Go out there tomorrow for the Lord is with you. In verse 22, at the moment they began to sing and to praise, the Lord caused the armies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir to begin fighting among themselves, and they destroyed each other. Grabe kayo, no? Klaro kayo diri, na the moment nag-sing and praise sila sa ginoo, motong time po, nga na-defeat po ang ilang makaway. Nga naman, when you sing and praise unto the Lord, then God Himself will start fighting for you. And that's why the enemy hates our church, because he knows nga, in our church, we have some of the best musicians, best worship leaders of Davao City singing praises unto the Lord every Sunday, even on Saturday night. And also, kanang baba nato, kanang ginabuhat nato every first Sunday of the month, he hates that. Lalo na tong last na tong babad, the very anointed babad, in, in which case nga, the lead po siguro si pastora ni Lord, kay guwapo kayo ito yung idea nga, not only were the babad singers supposed to lead or praise the Lord, di pang tawag po ang mga audience, to sing praises unto the Lord in front sa mga impromptu ng mga songs. That was a really great idea. And then Satan hates praise and worship. Kaya mo man ang time, mapildi po siya, mapildi po ang iyong mga katawahan. So that's why Satan is trying to attack our church right now. But you will see, sa kinabuhi ni David, ni Joseph, o ni Daniel, nga grabe ang attack sa enemy sa ilaha. Now, kung nga naman grabe ang attack sa enemy sa ilaha because Satan was threatened by them. But aside from the fact that they were also believers, one of the reasons nga grabe ang attack ni Satan sa ilaha is because kusog kaayo or powerful po kaayo ang ilahang divine destiny. The bigger or stronger your divine destiny is, like our church and our members are, the more Satan will attack you. Because he will try to discourage you. He will try to make you afraid aron that you will give up and so that you will give in to your depression or mupalayo ka sa gino. But that's not what you should be doing. Dapat di ka magpadala sa iya. You must not be devoured by Satan. Ayaw ka, may nana. Dapat you should learn to throw your anxieties and 
worries unto the Lord. Okay, parehas bitaw na sa kabaw in arrow. The more that Satan tries to pull you back, the farther and higher the Lord wants you to go. The more mulayo or the, the more mukusog ang arrow nga ginatira. So, importante kay na, na to ma-remember. And praise and worship is a really, really powerful weapon that Satan is so threatened with. Nga naman, praise and worship is everything in one. What do you mean by that, Pastor? It's it's very powerful. Okay? It's prayer in the form of song. It's declaration of the Word of God. Most of our Christian songs quote God's Word directly. It raises your faith. It lifts up your spirit. It gives you the joy of the Lord. Win, win, good. There are some things that never change. The new covenant changed everything, but it did not change praise and worship. Kung unsang old covenant nga praise and worship, God still wants His people to praise and worship Him all the time. And that is a very, very powerful weapon against the enemy. Now, even si Paul and si Silas, when they started praising God in jail, they, their chains fell off and God literally freed them from the prison. So remember that. And skabalugi si Satan nga kuya on divine destiny aning tuluhang kini because David was anointed by prophet Samuel bata pa siya to be king of Israel. So kabalo siya nga kuya on divine destiny ni David. Si Joseph pod by his dream nga iha pong bukam bibi nga ginasulti niya sa mga parents and brothers nga nasubot samot na nun sila kaselo sa iya o kasuko is also new also kabalo po si Satan nga kuya po ng divine destiny because it would appear that Joseph is destined to become a great king or a great ruler someday. He became prime minister of Egypt. Even si Daniel, he served under four kings. And remember, yung ko balikan na si Cyrus. He served for 70 years, hantod kay King Cyrus. Man importante man si King Cyrus. Si King Cyrus ang unang nga king, nga girelease niya ang mga Hodeo, gikan sa kingdom, gipauli niya sa Israel, nga gitabangan niya mag-rebuild sa temple. Ano gibuhat man ni King Cyrus? If you study history, church, you will find that King Cyrus did it because somebody told him that his name was written more than 1,000 years before in the book of Isaiah. Nga nakabutang dito nga siya ang hari nga gamiton sa Ginoo para makauli ang mga katawahan o niya para ma-rebuild ang temple. So, kinsa pa may makabuhat na na? Kundili si Daniel lang yun. Nga ang hari o advisor ni King Cyrus nga ginapagkatiwalaan niya nga mo'y trusted ni advisor and nakabalog po sa pulong sa gino. And that is Daniel's divine destiny. To serve faithfully, to prosper under the reigns of four different nga mga foreigner kings so that in the end, ang mga hudeyo makauli sa ilang homeland o makarebuild sa ilang temple. Kuya po ang divine destiny Daniel ba? Mao na, grabe po ang attack sa kaway sa iya. And that Satan also knows that every member of the New Covenant Christ Church and our church itself has a great divine destiny. And that is why he is trying to attack us, you know, at present. Mao na, the word of the Lord para sa toa karun is Joshua 1.9. Ingon pa ni Lord kay Joshua before he led the people of Israel to retake or to conquer the promised land. Ingon ni Lord sa kay Joshua, this is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. When you are afraid or discouraged, mga, you fall under the trap of the enemy. You lose your faith and then you start to give in to all kinds of negative emotions and then dali na lang ka i-attack ni Satan. But dili man gata as the people of God. Dili man ta immune sa mga attack sa kaaway nga. Kanang, what I mean to say is that naagi mga attack sa mahitabo sa toa. Now, si, Lo, si Daniel... Si Joseph o si uh, David, gipaburan mag sila sa gino. Pero that did not stop David from running from his life, for his life, from King Saul. For so many years, ginahunting siya. The favor of God was on Joseph, pero that did not stop uh, the enemy or mga kalaban niya from throwing him into the lion's den. The favor of God was upon Daniel, pero that did not stop Israel from being conquered. And for him to serve as a servant sa palasyo sa king for so many years. But in the end, amazing kay Lord, he will always give us a victory. Same kay Joseph. The favor of the Lord was upon Joseph. For that did not stop him from becoming a slave or becoming thrown in prison for no sin or no, no uh, actual nga sala. Pero still, the Lord was able to raise Joseph to be prime minister of Egypt. Now, nagi mga tax ang kaway. But in the end, in the end, it will never prosper. Sometimes Christians just give in to depression. Ba? And we don't know the future. We don't really know everything. Mangun. So even see si Prophet Elijah, 
katong dako after lang gud niya na pildi ang mga prophets of Baal sa katong showdown nila sa fire from the sky na patay niya ang or gipapatay niya sa mga Hodeo ang 450 nga prophets ni Baal ang nahitabo po siya pagkauman na depressed po siya even though propeta siya kay although maka-prophesy siya about sa Israel dili man siya maka-prophesy about sa iyang sarili po kay sometimes di mo kita kabalo siya may tabo sa to when sa first kings 19 nakabatang dali when Ahab told Queen Jezebel what Elijah had done and that he had slaughtered the prophets of Baal so verse 3 so Elijah fled for his life he went to Beersheba a city of Judah and left his servant there. Then he went on alone in the wilderness, traveling all day, and sat down under a broom bush, broom bush and prayed that he might die. I've had enough, he told the Lord. Take away my life. I've got to die sometime. It might as well be now. So even the greatest prophets of the Lord, still, Satan prophets, you know, I believe that Elijah is, just, is the greatest. Even the Jews think that up to now. But still, time na down po siya. time na nagkaroon siya depression. Pero, ingon pa siya, ingon pa siya, Lord, pati na lang ko. I want to die. Please, take me now. Inana. So, pero ang amazing thing sa Gino is that after that, the Lord restored Elijah and he still became stronger than ever before. So, it's because we don't know the future, mga God. Sometimes, magpadala ta sa atong depression, magpadala ta sa atong hadlok. But, fear not. The Lord is always going to help us. He's always going to cause us to be victorious. Muna, nakabotang sa Matthew 6.33, ingon si Lord sa ato ah, so above all, constantly seek God's kingdom and His righteousness, and all these less important things will be given to you abundantly. Put His kingdom, His church, His uh, righteousness, His grace before you, and then kana lang in priority spreading the gospel, and then everything else ihatag ni Lord sa atua, not just ihatag niya, but ihatag niya abundantly. You know what? The Lord loved. Daniel, he, fa- he gave favor and loving kindness to do- David, to Joseph. Pero there's all of these, all of these things na ani sa toa. Ah. The mercy of the Lord para sa ilaha, ang loving kindness niya, ang favor niya, ang gipakita niya sa ilaha. Na ano ni sa toa karon kitang man yung Covenant Christians. And it's summarized perfectly in the world called grace. Grace the grace of God will cause us to be victorious. The grace of God will cause us to be successful. The grace of God causes us favor in our lives. The grace of God is God's love and mercy for us. That is at work sa atong kinabuhi. Muna yung si Lord sa Matthew 6.34 na po sa The Living Bible. Don't be anxious about tomorrow. God will take care of your tomorrow too. Live one day at a time. Di mga ita dapat mag for the next day. Dapat di po ta mag for the next week. Samot na ganito mag dapat for the next month. Kaya even ang next day ganit din na to ang ay kagulaan. Nga naman, God will take care of us today and He will take care of us tomorrow as well. Masing maingon ka nga, Master, I wish nga, di ba ang blessing of the Lord means nga, protektahan ta niya sa mga troubles? No. Nakabatang sa Psalm 34, 19. The righteous person faces many troubles. Take note of that, ha? Many troubles. But ang nindotan na, but the Lord comes to the rescue each time. The Lord did not say nga gamay lang problema sa Kristuhanon. In fact, nag-aingon ang pulong si Gino, nga daghan tag problema, daghan tag magian nga troubles. Nga naman, ang God magodan ng kalibutan nga kini, nga si Satanas, is kaaway magodan to. And that is why He will always keep trying to attack us, always trying to devour us, and always trying to make us stumble. But if we just do, you know, what the will of God is atong kinabuhi, if we just prioritize the Lord, if we just keep praying to the Lord, thanking the Lord, and praising and worshiping Him, hindi kita mapili sa kaway. Sama ra sa itong mga examples kaniha. You know, sometimes musot yung kisuanan, pamo kayo mga problema karon. Now, delikado na. Because the Word of God tells us that the righteous faces many troubles. May yung kakaroon, malaki gina-face ka problem, malay challenge, ay mong kinabuhi. Maybe you should be caring about more things than just living for yourself. Nakapat namin na sa 2 Corinthians 11 verse 28. Ngayon pa si Paul Dere, besides everything else, I face the daily pressure of my concern for all the, chur- the churches. So, si Paul here is listing his troubles. Katong shipwreck, persecution, mga people daw, false brethren daw, in, in the church daw. Nagan siya ginato mga problems. Pero ang pinaka-importante daw sa iyang, iyang gi-mention gi- nga last of all, mo yung mga priority niya, is ginato bang po daw niya mga problema sa simbahan. Now, Paul knows, my God, that when he loves when you love the Lord, you also love His people. When you love the Lord, you also love His body, which is His church. And that is why, you know, Paul did not think of the church as something separate sa iya. 
because he knows that we are all one in the Lord. And yeah, importante lang po kayo, you know, just before sa atuang sermon karang gabi una, sa ako ang devotional this morning, the Lord showed me a nice verse, which I believe he wants me to share with you. Psalm 31 verse 19, and money mensahin Lord para sa atua. Yun siya, Oh, how great is your goodness to those who publicly declare that you will rescue them. For you have stored up great blessings for those who trust and reverence you. If you trust the Lord and you reverence Him, ginataho ni mong ginawa, ginaworship ni mo siya, the Lord has many, many blessings stored up for you. And ingon siya nga, grabe ang pagkamaayo o pagkabuutan sa gino sa mga people nga nagadeclare nga tabangan sila sa gino. Come on, church. Yung na-declare ba ninyo, ginatabangan mo sa gino? Yung na-declare ba nato, ginatabangan ta sa gino? Yes, i-declare nato ka rin. The Lord will always help us out of every trouble. The Lord will always deliver His church. The Lord will always save us from difficult circumstances. The Lord will always provide. The Lord will always heal. And the Lord will always give us victory in every area sa itong kinabay. And this is the message of the Lord for our church tonight. I hope that many of our members will listen to this kung dili ka rin na then at a later time because it is an important message na kailangan na tumihibalan kitang tanan. So, more na ang mensahe Lord for us tonight. For those who are ready, take up your communion implements right now and then let's continue to celebrate the supper of the Lord that the Lord told us to declare and to do often until He comes again. Let's lift up the bread. On the night where I betrayed Lord Jesus, you lifted the bread, you gave thanks and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, salamat kay Lord. Imong healthy nga body, Lord, was sacrificed on the cross, Lord, so that there would be healing for every single one of us, Lord. Lord, salamat kay Lord. That you were striped, you were scourged, you were pierced, Lord, with nails on your hands and feet, Lord God, so that by your stripes we would be healed. Salamat kay Lord karong gabi una sa pagkaon namo sa imong lawas. Mandawat po namo ang healing Lord for every cell, every organ and kada area sa among kinabuhi Lord. Salamat kay Lord nga kung sa kakaron mao sab kami. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, enjoying his full blessings and favor. So are we in this world, O God. You said Lord in your word that we are seated with you in the heavenly so God. It's Ephesians 2. Salamat kay Lord that wala kay sakit, wala kay balatian. Wala kay thyroid problem, Lord. Wala kay stroke, wala kay paralysis. Wala kay ubo, wala kay sipon. Wala kay flu. Wala kay sore throat. Wala kay hypertension, wala kay diabetes. Wala kay kidney disease. Salamat kay Lord that as you are, so are we in this world. This particular body of the Lord Jesus. On the same night, we lifted the cup, we gave thanks and said, This is my blood, the blood of the new covenant. It's shed for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, salamat kay Lord. May mong hamili nga dito. It ran down on that cross more than 2,000 years ago. And cleansed us from all sin and all unrighteousness, Lord. Salamat kay Lord, say mong promise, 2 Corinthians 5.21. We became sin on that cross so that we would become the righteousness of God. Noon kasi mga pulong, Lord, you pour blessings upon the heads of the righteous, Lord. Therefore, Lord, tungod sa imong hamili ka dito, Lord, we can also receive, Lord God, tanan blessings, tanan promises, tanan kadaugan sa imong pulong, Lord. Everything is ours, Lord God, even protection for us and for our church, O God. Salamat kay Lord, because of your blood. We are qualified to receive every blessing. So along with your blood tonight, Lord, we receive every victory and every blessing and every promise in your word as well. For they are all yes and amen in Christ Jesus. Let's drink the blood of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Lord, for this evening, O oh God. Thank you for your faithful listeners, O oh God. We believe, O oh God, that you have spoken into their hearts and into their minds. Alamat kay, Lord, that this message, O oh God, will guide your people, O oh God, in what to do, Lord God. Salamat, Lord, sa prayerfulness, O oh God. Salamat sa power of praise and worship. Salamat, Lord, that we will faithfully, Lord God, put you first in our lives, O oh God. Salamat kay Lord nga all of these things will cause us to be victorious, Lord. 
in the trials of life. Salamat kay Lord nga. No matter what troubles we face as Lord God, you will rescue us out of them all. Salamat kay Lord for those who are watching tonight. Salamat sa pag-bless sa ilang sources of income, sa pag-bless sa tanan area sa ilang kinabuhi, sa pag-bless sa ilang families, sa ilang studies, sa ilang mga trabaho, sa ilang business, sa ilang source of livelihood, Lord. Ila, even sa ilang mga properties o ganyan lang mga farms, oh God. Salamat kay Lord. Salamat, Lord, for giving us the victory in every area of our life. Thank you, Lord, for causing your people not to be worried, anxious, or afraid, but to trust in you, Lord. And we believe, oh God, you will fight for us, Lord, as we continue to praise you, Lord, as we continue to trust in you, Lord, and continue to do what you want us to do, Lord God, which is to spread your gospel and to preach, Lord God, the good news of your grace, oh God. So, salamat kay Lord for the people who are watching tonight. Bless all of our viewers and listeners. Bless, Lord God, Pastor Arman, Sister Gina, Harold, Angel, O God. Bless the Batinao Church, O God. Salamat po kay Lord. Pag bless kay Pastor Dexter, kay Sister Me, my Lord, especially kay Baby Noah, O God. Salamat, Lord God, sa total and complete healing. Salamat po, Lord, sa pag bless kay Pastor Pinky, Lord, sa Lord Rafael and the entire family. Lord God, sa ilang business, Lord, sa ilang negosyo, Lord, sa mga schooling, sa ilang mga bata, Lord. Salamat kay Lord for blessing every member of the New Covenant Christ Church. And thank you most of all, O God, for protecting your church, O God. And also, Lord God, uh, protecting your people, Lord. Salamat kay Lord, you are our defender. You will, the one, you will be the one to fight for us, Lord. It's not us, Lord God. Thank you for giving me wisdom and for giving me guidance, Lord, as to what to do. And salamat, Lord, for teaching me to lead your people in the right way, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift the light of His countenance upon you and give you His perfect shalom, both now and forever. In Jesus' name, the people of God say, Amen. Thank you for joining us tonight. Join us as well tomorrow at so church site for our church service at 9.30 in the morning with a short devotional before. See you tomorrow. Shalom and goodbye.